Hi, I'm Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook, and today I want to talk about seven things you can do to avoid breaking taps. Every machinist hates breaking taps. It's a real pain to extract a broken tap without damaging your part. Plus, tapping always seems to be one of the last operations you do on a part. That just guarantees the highest cost if you need to scrap the part. But there are seven things I'm going to show you in this video that will greatly reduce the number of broken taps you have to deal with. Thank goodness. Our first tip is to choose the best hole size for your tap. And it's also the tip that's going to make the biggest difference for you. Look, the recommended hole size found on the tap's packaging or in your drill index is probably not the best size. You have to realize there is no one drill size for a tap. Different drill sizes result in different thread percentages. This is what's key. 100% thread is only 5% stronger than a 75% thread, but it requires three times the torque to tap it. So for just a little bit stronger thread, you wind up with a much greater chance of breaking your tap. The chart on this page shows that relationship. Those red-orange dots are tapping torque. Look how fast they climb when thread percentage gets above 60%. Meanwhile, the blue dots are thread strength. That curve flattens out just when the torque starts climbing. Those recommended drill sizes on the tap packaging are almost always for a 75% thread. Great strength, but way into that too much torque zone. Now, here are some guidelines for thread percentages based on the different conditions you'll encounter. Dial back to less than 75% when you tap a deep hole. Dial back for hard and tough materials too. Be sure to check the requirements on the job as your customer may require a particular thread percentage. If they don't, or if the requirements within the ranges of the chart, dial back the thread percentages. You'll reduce the torque needed and your taps will thank you. Okay, let's talk about how to calculate your thread percentages to do that. It's easy. The formulas are right on the slide. You can use those formulas or you can use a handy chart like the one I show here on the right that my G-Wizard Machinist calculator produces for you. My second suggestion is use form taps whenever you can. Form taps don't generate any chips. They push the material into shape, cold forming your threads. The most common reason taps break is they get bound up in their own chips. And this can't happen with a form tap. They don't make any chips. So form taps also have a greater cross section. So the taps themselves are stronger than cutting taps. Now they do have two disadvantages. First, form taps cannot be used with hard materials. You can only form tap up to 36 HRC hardness. There's a lot more materials than you'd think that are softer than that, but there will definitely be, be materials you encounter that can't be form tapped. Second, some industries don't allow form taps because the process can create voids in the threads that trap contaminants. It also creates stress risers on the threads, so be sure to be aware of that for your customers. Okay, number three, thread milling. Always consider thread milling versus tapping on critical and tough jobs. Thread mills just last longer than taps do, although they do cut more slowly. Now you can thread close to the bottom of a blind hole with a thread mill, and a single thread mill can cut a variety of thread sizes, which can save you some tool changes. Plus, Thread mills can be used in harder material than taps. In fact, they're your only option on materials over 50 HRC in hardness. Lastly, if you do manage to break a thread mill, it's smaller than the hole, so it probably won't get stuck in the part the way a tap does. My fourth suggestion to minimize tap breakage is to consider a purpose-made tapping lubricant. Most machine coolants, especially the water-soluble ones, are not as good for tapping. 
If you're having problems, try using some special tapping lubricant. Put it in a spill-proof cup like the one I show here, sit it right on your machine table, and program your G-code to dip the tap automatically in the cup. You can also try coated taps because the coating adds lubricity, which requires less torque than to do the tapping. Number five, let's talk about tool holders for tapping. To start, you want a holder that locks onto the square shank so the tap can't twist in the holder. Tapping uses a lot of torque, so having a positive lock on that shank is helpful. You can do that either with chucks specially made for tapping or you can get ER tapping collets that have a square pocket in the back for the shank. Second, consider a floating holder even if your machine supports rigid tapping. Floating holders are a must without rigid tapping, but they will increase your tap's life even if you have rigid tapping. The reason is your machine is limited by its maximum ability to accelerate the spindle and axes. That prevents it from synchronizing exactly. There's always some axial force pushing or pulling trying to stretch or compress the tap. Floating tap holders relieve that stress entirely and so you don't have to worry about perfect synchronization. Number six, if you're tapping a blind hole, failure to extract the chips is the most common reason taps are broken. That's why they invented spiral fluted taps because they eject the chips up and out of the hole. Note that spiral fluted taps are not as strong as the more common spiral point taps. So we don't use them all the time, just use them on blind holes. And speaking of blind holes, my seventh and last tip, and oh, the line is doing the face palm, is to mind the depth on blind holes. If you get it wrong and you crash the tap in the bottom of the hole, it's almost certainly going to break the tap. Now many are not aware, but you can actually calculate how much clearance to leave at the bottom, and it's probably more than you'd think or more than you're used to using. I'll walk you through the math here on the left, but you can see that for our example, a quarter twenty roll form tap, we needed not quite a quarter inch of clearance from where the tap stopped to the whole bottom. You can also see that based on the type of tap, that clearance varies a little bit. So be sure you get this right and you'll use these seven tips. You'll break a lot fewer taps. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm Bob Warfield and I'll be back soon with another CNC Chef video.